Hi everyone and welcome. I'm down here in my wormery and what you see in front of you is my Vermi Bag Mini and my Vermi Bag Mini is where I keep European night crawlers. So it's my um it's my one and only flow through composting system. So if you're unaware of what a com uh, flow through system is, um basically it's called flow through is because the the container has a hatch on the bottom and the container is tapered and the whole idea is that in time the material that the worms are creating all their compost kind of settles down on the bottom and forms sort of a, a block that adheres to the tapered container which allows you at the at some point in the future to open up the bottom and eject a certain amount of the finished compost but since it's sort of you know first of all since it's tapered and since it's sort of enclosed within this tapered container it's supposed to keep itself suspended as you eject material out the bottom and even though I've had this bin in service for over a year now, I have yet to ever harvest this container. Um, but I'm doing something that is kind of along the lines of harvesting. And I'm not trying to harvest the compost out of the bottom. I'm actually trying to harvest worms out of the population. Because um, a friend of mine was interested in getting some worms and I promised him some red wigglers which I've already obtained out of some of my red wiggler bins which was easy enough pretty conventional um, extraction of worms over there it was over here in the vermi bag mini where I was a little bit unsure of um, how I'm going to accomplish this it's sort of uncharted territory <laughs> but um but I figured I'm just going to give it a go you know I'm going to sort of go at this ad hoc and make it up as I go along but I've kind of got a plan and um, you know the first thing I've got to contend with is the fact that I I just fed this bin I think it was yesterday but it was very recently and I'd taken a couple of these bundles of food wrapped up in newspaper placed two of them down into a nice deep hole and then I stacked in all of the older food right on top of that so my thought was that maybe right there at the start I can pull out some of that old food that might already have been reoccupied by worms. And I was going to put the, um, the material that I think has a lot of worms in it into this little clear plastic tub temporarily. And then um, once I reach those little bundles of food that I had placed in here yesterday, I, I've got this um, cardboard box that I was going to place those into temporarily. Because those bundles of food, I just want to return if I can remove them intact. Then I think it'll be a little bit uh, a little bit easier because then I won't have stuff flying around. I'll just have these two bags, more or less, full of food items if I can go carefully and um, and then just return them back into here after we've extracted some worms. So uh, all right, I think the easiest way to do this is just to sort of dive in. So I'm going to uh, keep my little plastic tub over here on the side. And I'm just going to start reaching down in there and removing material. Uh, like I said, I'm going to try to go for some of the material right on top of where those plastic bags were placed. Which is where I knew I had put some of the older food items from previous feedings. Feedings prior to yesterday's feeding. So I'm thinking that that might be a place where we might find a fair number of worms hanging out. And I got a, I got this feeling I'm going to be pulling out a fair bit of material from this bin in order to get a decent number of worms in this extraction. And you know a lot of this stuff is simply going to go right back into the bin after I sort out a lot of these larger food chunks and after I sort out those bags with the food in them or those paper bundles that have the food in them. And, uh, and hopefully I'm able to come up with a respectable a, a number of, you know, European night crawlers to give to my friend. But, the, you know, I'm not really sure what to expect here. This is kind of uncharted territory for me, for sure. Definitely never tried doing this um, this way. And uh, for that matter, I've never tried doing anything even similar to this in this container. This is totally new for me, trying to do anything like this. But um, we've actually gotten to the first little bundle of food in here. It's unusual how small it feels. It kind of makes me wonder if... Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure what happened here. But like I said, I'm just going to set these aside. That's why I've got this cardboard box. And uh, luckily this one's still pretty much intact. Almost untouched. Which is not surprising after only a day. And um, that'll go right back in. So there's going to be one one more right beneath this. Um, 
but I think right between the two I had taken some of these older food items that were already in the bin prior from prior feedings and um, I'm just going to put those aside temporarily still trying to just select handfuls of material that hopefully have a decent number of worms hanging out in them well I've got this funny feeling it's going to be mainly castings and you gotta admit the castings in this tub really look nice I've never really um, gone after the castings in this um, European nightcrawler system but um every time I start looking at it from the perspective of hey I'll, you know how do the castings themselves look I always feel like the material looks really really nice so I do look forward to someday um, doing a harvesting of the the container but that's not going to be today um so you can see this one starts to unravel a little bit but you can see the kind of foods that were administered to this bin yesterday within these little bundles that i created but i think for the most part they've stayed intact after only one day and i'm going to try to restore them and put them right back into where i took them from after we do this but I still feel like I've got some material here that probably has a good number of worms hanging out in it so I'm just gonna go ahead and grab just a few more handfuls of stuff over here but I also still want to leave enough room in this plastic container to work in because so I, I guess what I'm gonna sort of be doing here is doing sort of a light harvesting approach of trying to give the worms a little bit of time to dive down into the material that they're inhabiting here skim off some of the material from the top and uh, and eventually hopefully end up with you know just a collection of worms hanging out at the bottom or at least that's kind of how I'm envisioning it playing out <laughs> we'll have to see how it really occurs in practice I really don't know exactly how much uh, material I should start with. I guess I should probably start with as much as I possibly can fit in here. Within reason. And then, uh, then I guess as we start sifting that material off the top, causing the worms to dive down into the bed, um, We'll just continue returning that stuff into here. Or we'll, maybe I'll just set it aside and we'll pile it in at some point um, on top of the feeding after I put those paper bags back in. Or maybe I can just put the paper bags right back in, put some of the food bits that we pulled right back out. And then anything that I uh, separate from the worms out of here, I can just uh, pile that right back on top. And this way we'll have our feeding zone kind of submerged again over here. So why don't I do that? So you can tell I'm not, not lying when I'm making it up as I go along. <laughs> I'm going to just return this first feeding bundle down to the bottom. Take some of these food bits that we found along the way. Put them back down in there too. I don't think there were that many. And then back in goes the second food bundle okay and I think there may have just been a couple other little food bits placed off here onto the edge as we went along but I believe that the majority of the larger food bits were part of the extracted pile that we pulled the worms out with so we'll, uh, we'll have to see what we end up with as we start sifting through that so Let's, uh, let's head over to the bench where we can start working on this pile of worms. Okay, so I've got stuff here arranged here kind of as if I were doing a, uh, a light sifting of the, um, or light separation of the worms from the compost. And if you're, uh, if you're unfamiliar with what that is, basically you're using the bright overhead lights to trigger sort of a natural behavior of the worms, which is um, for them to retreat down into the into the earth because um, you know the, the sunlight has multiple terrible effects on a worm you know number one it could dry them out 
But number two is it makes them clearly visible to predators. Birds can see them, birds come down and eat them. So it's a, a self-preservation technique of worms to avoid being in bright light, equating bright light to being out in the sun. And it makes complete sense. The material that we piled out of the, the vermi bag has only been out here for a couple minutes, but as you can see, there's virtually no signs of any worms. I think I see the tail of a worm right there. Oh, here's a curious one poking its head out right here. So I'm not looking for perfection here. I'm looking to try to get this done quickly. <laughs> but basically, I'm going to allow a little bit of time, uh, a few minutes at a time, to pass so that I can sort of try to skim off a top layer of uh, material over here. And hopefully it'll be for the most part worm free. And I'm just going to start piling it into this box over here and then it'll all end up going right back into the into the Verma bag after we're finished. But it just seemed, e seemed easier to have this box nearby for me to simply pile the extracted uh, materials into rather than trying to work around the vermi bag. And then like I said, this stuff will simply go right back in because right now those food bundles that we put back in are basically exposed to the air. And I prefer to try to keep the food that I give my worms a little bit more submerged below the surface um, in the hopes that it's going to avoid the, um, you know, the attraction of insects coming in to try to take advantage of the food. So it's um one, two, three, four, five. There's a few worms here that we can certainly wait for them to um, dive down, but I think I might be shooting myself in the foot. I think if I can increase the surface area here, we might get better results here. So maybe what I need to do first is sort of spread out the pile a little bit. I could see leaving a little bit of space over here on the side just in case we need a little bit of room in this container for other things. So rather than spreading it out across the entire surface of the container, we'll leave that part of, part of it over here um, empty. But by spreading it out this way, we're definitely giving ourselves a little bit more surface area to um, let the light shine onto and hopefully driving the worms down and, um, and allowing us to skim more and more material off the top, off of a larger upper surface. That's the other thing I'm doing here is I'm just poking down and I'm trying to locate larger chunks of food that are floating around in here. I've already removed a couple cantaloupe pieces and here I have a, um, a mango seed or the, the outer husk of a mango seed. The little seed portion of it that was inside has already been consumed by the worms. But they're still kind of working this uh, the outer husk of the mango seed down. And they'll eventually eat it all in time. So I'm just pulling out stuff here that uh, is not necessarily castings. It's just larger, larger objects that I could feel just from running my fingers around. This is a, the part of another mango seed. But I do want to, uh, at some point, allow a little bit of time for these worms to retreat so I can continue skimming more and more compost off the top. So I don't think I felt any more larger bits of stuff below the surface here. At least not yet. Maybe after we skim some more stuff off the top. So. Once again, I'm going to leave a few minutes here for the worms to retreat. And then we could try to take a little bit more of this stuff off the top.
allowed for a couple minutes so hopefully we got pretty clear top surface here I'm just going to proceed with trying to remove more of this compost and I guess when I do see a worm I could just try to avoid it or if I do scoop one out I can pick them out and put them back in shouldn't be too difficult to accomplish but I certainly don't want to take up too much time on this I know there's got to be an easier way <laughs> but naturally you know right away when you think of a, a vermi bag a flow through type system especially you know you're not thinking in terms of har harvesting the compost um, in this fashion or for that matter you're not even thinking about harvesting in terms of harvesting worms you're usually thinking in terms of harvesting the compost that they've created for you so you know in theory this the system is designed for harvesting of the compost to occur in an entirely different fashion so it's not even really geared for um, you know for for worms to be picked out of it so it's a uh, kind of a round peg square hole sort of a arrangement here so I'm just doing my best I you know I kind of brainstormed on how I could possibly accomplish this and this seemed to me like maybe the easiest way to go about it I bet you I'm probably gonna get a whole bunch of interesting comments that are gonna make me think oh geez yeah that would have been so much easier <laughs> Not to say that this is difficult. This is going pretty good, if I do say so. Luckily, the worms are pretty responsive to the light. I've got um, a number of pretty bright lights overhead. Usually, the bright lights are mainly to, um, you know, to supply the camera with enough illumination for a decent image for the video. But at times like this, the bright lights also come in really handy to invoke the response that you want from the worms in terms of, you know, diving down when you want them to. So, uh, you know, I don't have to go crazy, you know, if a, one or two worms sneaks by in a, in a piece of food that I'm trying to pull out or in a handful of compost that I'm trying to pull out, it's not the end of the world. But if I spot one, I'm going to certainly put it back in because what I'd really like to end up with is a nice pile of worms here in the end so here I'm starting to come up with more and more worms as I skim All right, you know, if I make myself some more room I'm gonna go return some of these food bits that I collected back to the worm bin to the worm bag and in the meantime this will give these little guys a little bit more time to retreat maybe I can also ret re extract a few more of these larger bits now that I've dug down a little bit further maybe even disrupt things a little bit here so that the worms near the surface know that I'm here and hopefully they try to get out of harm's way after they sense my rummaging through their material. Let's just do one more quick probe, see if we come across any other good sized food chunks within fingers reach. This is a little cylindrical item, which I don't even know what it is. Something tells me it's a corn cob, but it's so tiny anymore. Yeah, that's probably what it is. You would never think it's like a shrunken head, right? still has the shape and the texture and the everything of a corn cob but it's miniature anymore it's so weird this is a banana peel a whole bunch of grit stuck to it so I think we've um I think we've done a pretty good job pulling bits and pieces out of here maybe it's time to let this sit for another minute or two let the worms dive out of view so we could do another couple skims in the meantime, I'll return the food that I've collected thus far back into the bag. We'll continue in another minute or two. Okay. Okay, 
And once again, it's only been about two or three minutes that I've uh, given these worms to retreat down out of view. And they're doing a good job at that. So let's see what we can round up here off the surface again. Hopefully with a minimum number of worms in it. This is kind of cool because I've never really examined the castings from my European Nightcrawlers before. The only thing I've ever done with my European Nightcrawlers is feed them. <laughs> I um, I guess it's, it was over a year ago when I last moved the worms out of their previous home into this vermi bag that they occupy now. And since then all I've been doing is piling in more and more food on top of uh, what's in there today. So. Uh, so it is kind of cool to actually get some hands-on exposure to their handiwork. The material in this bin is definitely coming along really nice. I mean, you know, you saw you saw the level of how far it was filled. It's um, certainly not even close to being at capacity. So I wouldn't I wouldn't be driven to doing a harvest of the castings because I was reaching some sort of a, a limit in space within the container. It would be more, um, I think, out of curiosity just to see exactly what the material down at the very bottom looks like and see what it's like to actually um, do an ejection of material out the bottom of one of these flow-through systems. So someday, but I'm not really in a great rush to get to that point. I just figured Someday I'll get curious, or someday I'll have some reason to do it, and I'll get around to doing it, but for now my only business with the uh, the Vermi Bag Mini, Mini is to keep, keep feeding it, keep expanding the volume of the material in the bin, which uh, hopefully also, you know, by giving them more space to be in, encourages them to, you know, expand their numbers so that I have a slightly larger population. And I guess another thing that I plan to do at some point soon, it'll be akin to what we're doing here, it's going to be to launch a secondary European Nightcrawler bin. It wasn't very long ago, just uh, maybe a week and a half ago, that I launched off a secondary African Nightcrawler bin. So I had always been concerned that all my night crawlers were in just a single container. So at least my African night crawler population has now been split, giving me a little bit of redundancy and um, giving me a little bit of peace of mind if anything should ever go really crazy inside of one or the other populations now of uh, African night crawlers. I know I've got a backup. But when it comes to the European night crawlers, the, uh, this population in this Vermi bag mini is um, everything I've got. So uh, I've also built another fresh, ready to go bin. It'll be ready to go pretty soon. It was just built recently, so I usually like to give my newly built bins a little bit of time to sort of prime before I introduce the worm populations to them. So I think that I'll be doing something very similar to this very soon maybe as soon as another week from now, um, in order to get some European night crawlers launched off into a secondary container. And then I'll have my sort of backup plan for my European night crawlers as well. And that'll be a, that'll be a good peace of mind for me. So I look forward to that. And at least doing it here once will give me a little sense of what I'm in for the next go around. So I am down deep enough now that I think it's um, possible to sort of sift through and try to locate and extract any larger chunks at this point. And then all we'll be doing after that is we're just going to be sifting off castings from the top. But at this point I think I can pretty easily pull out all the remaining larger chunks that we pulled out in the beginning. And then we can let this thing sit one more time, let the worms retreat. And then do another skimming off the top. And then at some point I might actually even 
take what's here in my box collected so far and return it before I end up having some sort of a silly mistake and dropping it or something like that. It's starting to get a little bit heavy and I don't want this flimsy box to to give way under the weight of the material that's in it. Not to mention that the material is damp, you know, it's worm castings, so it's got a little bit of moisture to it. And um, I'm sure that the cardboard can hold up to it for a little while at least, until we finish. But it's not the strongest cardboard box either. So I just don't want to push my luck with it and end up with a whole bunch of stuff spilled out all over the table and on the floor. <laughs> just be easier to return it back to where it belongs so that might be what we do after we finish this little skim through but I think I've managed to identify and extract most of the larger bits in here at this point it might just be best to give this thing a little bit more time allow the worms to dive down again that'll allow us to skim some more castings off the top Okay. Let's give these guys a little bit more time to dive down and we'll empty the cardboard box in the meantime. Alright, so I was emptying the box. I was able to actually poke around and grab a few more European night crawlers to include in our collection here. Pulled straight out of the vermi bag manually. <laughs> but it does look like we've um, allowed enough time for hopefully another skim or two of castings off the top. Okay, so. I guess as I get to a point where I don't feel like I could skim anymore because there's already worms peeking through the surface, if it looks like it's only a worm or two mixed in with the material, then I'll either try to pluck them out and move them aside so that I can pull the castings out, or maybe I'll just pull the castings out knowing that there's a worm in there, and then I'll pull the worm out after I've re relocated the castings that I've skimmed off. So I'm just trying different approaches here to see what works best or maybe alternate back and forth between different approaches but I know eventually we'll get to the point where you can't really skim a whole lot more material off the top because at some point you've really been reduced to only worms so I'm looking forward to reaching that stage <laughs> I'm definitely curious to see how many worms I've managed to round up in this way. It's not very intuitive, you know. You don't really get a good sense of how you're doing as you're doing it. I guess mainly because there's just so much other um, extra material going along for the ride. It's very hard to judge how many worms you're actually pulling out. But I guess we'll see what we end up with at the end. Maybe at some point we'll want to just do one other little kind of stirring up of the top surface to try to encourage one more diving of the worms so we can get another uninterrupted skim off the top surface without there being any worms there to interfere with that. I'm really kind of tempted just to try to till up the entire remaining pile of what's here in this container to see what kind of a amount of worms there is beneath all this stuff or is it just you know just a mix still of worms mixed into all the castings or are we actually starting to get 
a little congregation of worms at the bottom of the pile. I certainly hope it's the latter of the two. So I think once again, just kind of loosening up the stuff that I'd like to skim off the top is maybe a one good way to sort of get it loose in advance and maybe even disturb it enough so that the light can penetrate it enough to convince some of the worms occupying it to dive down. But here once again I think I'm gonna go ahead and empty what I've collected again, which is quite a bit, and one more batch here. And then we'll come back and hopefully we'll have more worms that have dived down out of view. Looks like there's just this one worm over here <laughs> exploring. So we'll try to help him find the uh, the lower reaches of this pile where he can be reunited with all of his friends and relatives. And um, now we can just try doing a couple more skims and see what we start to see. See, like, this is what I was kind of hoping to see right here, which is a predominance of worms as you get to a certain level where there's very little else but worms. So we'll just continue returning any worms that snuck by in the skimming process here back to the pile. But it's also probably um, okay to leave a little bit of the casting material that they occupy right now to, to go with them to their new master because you don't want to just have worms, bare worms with nothing for them to reside in. I had done a similar extraction earlier of red wigglers and I I managed to re remove the majority of the um, compost that they were occupying and return it back into the compost bin that the worms came from similar to what we're trying to accomplish here now but it's really not the end of the world to leave some of this material with the worms so that they can feel comfortable and at home in it because it's not only castings it's still riddled with bits and pieces of bedding material and food scraps that they can continue to feed on and feel at home in and my thought was to supplement it with a little bit of uh, extra leafy material. Maybe just um, wet down some leaves to mix in with the worms so that they've got some bedding type material to hang out in up until they uh, get situated in their new home with their new master. I really don't want to go two bananas anymore. I think we've almost reached that point where there's really not much more room for the worms to retreat down into. It's almost like the only thing left here is worms anymore. And perhaps we can sort of stack it up one last time and see if we can do a final skim. But I am starting to get that sense that the majority of what we're dealing with here is basically worms anymore. But yeah, I think I'll just let it be for another minute or two. We'll try to skim off a few more handfuls of this compost from the top. And then maybe we'll get a good look at how many worms we've managed to round up here. So let's give this another minute or two. I think for that matter, let's bring the camera closer.
All right, so I'm dealing with a nice, fresh, clean box again, ready for more castings to be sifted off the top, but I really don't think there's much left on here. I think we can probably do a little bit more, but we're probably going to end up being left with almost nothing but worms at this point. Like I said, I, I don't see any harm in leaving some of this casting material with the worms for them to continue occupying it, um, you know, rather than just having just bare worms. I mean, I, I've seen videos of some of these worm retailers when they uh, when they pull out a batch of worms that they're preparing to package up and send off to a customer, they usually mix up the worms with a um, I guess almost like an equal amount of bedding type material like a peat moss or a cocoa core or something like that so that the worms have some sort of a medium to be in as opposed to just being crowded up against one another and that medium also doubles as food for them to nibble on while they're in transit so that's why I thought you know since I don't have any peat moss I would take some uh, ground up leaves and um, wet them down nicely and use that as sort of the um, bedding type medium to transport these little guys in. But you can see I'm scraping off little bits of casting material here and there and for the most part I'm reaching that worm ball on the bottom without much more casting material left for these little guys to retreat into. So I'm almost thinking that this might be the uh, the end of our skimming process here. The vermi bag is pretty much back to the way it looked when we started. All the food stuff was put right back down where it came from. All of this casting material that uh, that I've been sifting off has just been going right on top. So in there there's really not much left to do other than put the container back where it belongs. But for these guys, I want to relocate them into a slightly smaller container that I can keep them in up until I can place them into something um, that I can transport them in. So I'm going to go ahead and take this plastic container here. It might be easiest just to do the old pour method, right? Just pour the contents from one into the other. I think that should give us the easiest method for getting the worms moved over. It should give us a better view of how many we managed to pull together as well before they try the you know, before they try to retreat back down into the little remaining compost that they have around them certainly isn't much. I shouldn't take what little they have remaining. I should just allow them to have something to dive down into. But it's a pretty nice amount. If I had to guess a ratio in terms of weight with regards to worms relative to the castings in here, I would definitely have to say that the weight that's in this tray it's got to be 90% um, worms at this point. So, you know, I think just out of curiosity, I'm going to go grab the scale and weigh this just to see how many worms were just extracted. I'm curious. And I'm just going to rest this cardboard on the uh, very dirty tablecloth that I have. <laughs> it's definitely due for a replacement one of these days. This thing can provide us measurements in pounds and ounces, which is what is which is what it is set to now. You could also see it in kilograms. So I guess what we're looking at here is 12 ounces, which is exactly three quarters of a pound. But you've also got to factor in there's you know some stuff in here that's not worms, and there's also the plastic container itself. So I would have to say that there's at least a half a pound of European night crawlers in here. And for those of you that want to see it in metric. We're talking about, you know, I don't know, once again, 
removing some of that weight to account for the container and for the stuff in here that's not worms, you know, maybe a little bit over a quarter, up to 0.3 kilograms. So um, that's my haul of European night crawlers from my friend. So, like I said, the Vermi Bag Mini, for the most part, has been restored to the way we found it when we started. I um, just need to put the plastic covering over it and put it back where it belongs. Then I got a couple things that need to be cleaned up over here. The plastic container, I'll put the scale away. So there's not much more interesting stuff remaining here to see. So before I go and I shut the camera off, let me just really quickly say thank you. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please remember to give me a thumbs up. That's always really appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, consider subscribing to the channel too. That's really appreciated as well. All right, everyone. Have a great day. Take care.